All right, hello, everybody. My name is Bob Kepford. I'm going to talk a little bit today about the workflow module and how we're using it to kill the paper flow in one of our projects. I work for an organization called State Center Consortium. Uh, essentially, what we are, we are an educational consortium. We, we're kind of a public face to uh, the State Center Community College District. Uh, we we try to facilitate communication uh, between the high schools and the community colleges in our areas. And uh, that's, that's kind of the core. We, we also do some training and things like that. But the project I'm going to be discussing today is an articulation project. And for those of you not in education, articulation in reference to uh, high school education is if a student is in vocational ed and they want to take uh, a high school course, an ag course, for instance, and they want to take it in high school, there's a possibility for them to be able to get college credit for that while they're in high school instead of having to retake essentially the same course in, in a couple years. And so that's what an articulation agreement is. It allows high school students to get college credit while they're in high school. So when they do go on to that vocational career, they have a head start. Um, and so this is a kind of a real simple diagram of what we are. We were, we're kind of uh, a way for the high schools to communicate with the colleges. Um, and so the problem was uh, we were trying to address is we had an articulation uh, application process that was paper-based and essentially a, a teacher would apply for an articulation of, of a course they were teaching and they would fill out this form and they would mail it into an office at one of the community colleges. Then all the documents were attached to that and uh, the vice chancellor, the vice president of instruction, the dean of, uh, of agriculture or business or whatever, all of those people all along the line would have to approve that. Well, after they viewed all the documents and approved it, they would put it in the district uh, mail, send it to the next office. It would sit in someone's uh, inbox and maybe get lost. Um, and six months later, the teacher had no idea where they were in the process of getting their course articulated. And so what the result was the teacher stopped applying for these articulation agreements and the real loser in the whole thing was students. Um, we really wanted to offer students this, uh, you know, this, this service, but it was getting lost just because of uh, paper flow. And so this year we decided to try to get this, get this system working better. And um, our, I'm going to show you a few modules today that we use to do this, mainly views, CCK, um, the workflow module, rules, uh, the flag module, and uh, automatic node titles. And so there was a, a lot of planning that went into this uh, because, I mean, the system itself is a little bit complicated because of the approval process. But we needed to, it to be a paperless workflow so that our office, the consortium, could kind of be an overseer just to make sure that if, the, if an application got lost somewhere, somebody dropped the ball, that we could know where that application was. We could get on the phone and call that person, send them an email. Um, so we wanted a paperless workflow so that we wouldn't have to worry about stuff getting falling between the tracks. And we also wanted it to be trackable. And all, all these things can be done in Drupal, so it was just an obvious uh, solution for us. The other thing is that, that we have, um, right now we have three uh, college campuses in our district, um, or three colleges, we have more than campuses than that, but so everybody's kind of distributed out um, over, over a, a broad area. And so it needed to be online. And we also wanted to be able to notify people when they had a new application. So uh, we needed email notifications, we also had different roles. We wanted certain people to be able to see an application at a certain time, but we wanted to hide that application from others. So there was a kind of a complicated uh, a permission system that we needed, and we also needed different people to have access at different times. And then we also, after, after the application had been through the whole process, we wanted to be able to display it online so the teachers and students and parents could go back later and they could see that yeah, this course I took in high school two years ago, I have, actually have college credit, so I don't need to take it over again. Um, and so these, these were the, the key needs that we had for this project. So um, this is kind of how I approached the planning of this. At first I looked at, at the application, which is, it was a content type, as well as we had colleges, we had um, quite a few different content types. Then I looked at the views, like what am I going to have to display to what users? Um, and then I looked at what kind of users am I going to have? Am I going to have, uh, I'm going to have a teacher? I'm going to have a vice chancellor of education. I'm going to have a vice president. Uh, so I have all these different roles. And then there's going to be different workflows. And so we had to take these one at a time. 
and write all this stuff out and think it through and then, then throw it in the trash can, you know, start over. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of planning went into this. So uh, the basic content types that we're going to be showing you are the articulation agreements, the OccuTrack application, uh, colleges, college courses, high schools, and, and uh, ROPs, which is a regional occupational program. And so this is kind of a, a, a little site map, a, a little uh, mind map of, of how everything is kind of organized. Um, as you notice, articulation agreement is the center piece of this site. It's a node type. Is, and a, everything on this page is a node type except the teacher user role. Um, and so I'm making use of quite a few different node references. Um, we have, I'll, I'll just go from the top. We have a college, so we have approximately, I think we have four colleges in the system. So um, each college is going to have its own college courses. And so each college course has a node reference field to whatever college it, that course is a part of. And at the same time, I'll, we'll, look at, um, we'll look at the high school node type. Um, we have teachers. And so those teachers are teachers at a particular school. And so we have all the schools in our area, in our county, are listed in the site. And so if a teacher comes and applies, they select which school they, they work at. And, and that is what they're attached to as a, as a user. So there's, that's a user reference, actually. And then we have the articulation agreement, which has references to all of these types. So when someone fills out an articulation application, they essentially are selecting the college course they want to articulate to the college they want to articulate to, the high school they're from, which is selected for them automatically, um, and then if it's a sponsored course by a regional occupational program, they'll select that. And then uh, the last reference is to the teacher that's making the application. And so this is, uh, is kind of how we, <laughs> this is what I had to deal with. These are all the different roles that we currently have um, and I'd never done a Drupal site with this many roles, and it has its, uh, it has its problems. Um, one of them is with the GUI interface and, the, and a couple of the modules. But uh, this, was, this, to me, was the most obvious way to do it. Um, and so we have an admin role, a data entry role, which is just somebody that uh, manages everything. Um, and then each division dean at each college has certain things they can do. So every, everybody on this list has a different set of permissions. They have a different... Uh, different content they can access. And so the, the, the key thing, everything so far is fairly straightforward, um, except when you get to the point where somebody makes an application and that application needs to go to this one person in one of the colleges that has an account on the site and they need to be able to look at the content and they need to be able to either approve it or mark it for review. And so uh, this is where workflow module comes in, and workflow module is really powerful. Um, but when you get into a workflow that looks like this, it can be pretty uh, confusing to set up. Um, and this is actually the first workflow module, uh, workflow diagram I created and showed to our administrators was about twice as tall and twice as long as this. And when I showed them the actual workflow, they, they said, well, we, we can simplify this. Uh, we don't have to have it be so complicated. Sure. Question. Just a question on the workflow, because I can't follow it all, obviously. But <laughs> was there ever a time in this workflow where somebody had a choice on where a thing could be routed? Yes. Yes, and this, this, is what, this is what really makes workflow awesome, the module that is. Um, and I'll just, we'll just step through this. Uh, we start with an application, and this is just a node form. Somebody comes to the site, and they're already registered as a teacher on the site. Uh, they, go, they click on a, a button that says articulation application. They fill that form out. That node it gives them a confirmation, and then it sends a notification. Depending on what CCK field they selected, whether they selected Fresno City College or Reedley College, it will um, fire off an email to the person, the vice president of instruction at whichever college they selected. That person gets an email, and that email is a link to the node that was submitted. They click on the link in their email that takes them, providing they're logged in, it takes them to the actual application. They review the application, and if it, if it has all the documents attached that it needs to have attached, if it has everything completed correctly, then they will mark it to go to the next step, which um, as you see, we have approved. That's not an actually a workflow step, but 
they make a choice, which division does it go to? Does it go to applied technology? Does it go to business? Does it go to fine arts? Um, and so they make a choice there. When they do that, it fires off another email to the person that they're sending it to. That person gets notification, this process goes back again. Those people offline, they, they download all the documents, they go and have their meeting that they have monthly, and they go over all these documents, and then they make a decision on this application whether they're going to accept it. If they accept it, they go to the, back to the website, they, they click accept, and then it is another email go back to the uh, vice president of instruction. Um, and I, I do want to preface this by saying I have absolutely no control over this workflow. <laughs> um, and it, 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 it's, a, it's a long process. Um, and so at that point, the vice president of instruction, he, he basically blog, logs this in, in the, the, that college's system that makes a record of this. And, and I have, that's outside of our, our domain. Um, and then once he does that, he, he clicks publish and it sends off a notification to our vice chancellor's office. And they're the, actually the final person that makes the, the agreement live on our website for people to, to go to and see. And so that's, that's the process. And this is, kind of, this is uh, let me go ahead and pull up the website here. This is what the workflow module uh, admin screen looks like. And so that's a, a mind map. Of, that was, I was showing you a mind map of the workflow. This is actually how it looks in a workflow module. Um, so we have creation, and that is, that's basically the node submitted. You have to set up a second state for workflow module to work, um, and that's I created a state called submitted. And then we have each step through here. Now, um, what took me a while to get my head around was that this isn't a list. It's not one, two, three, four, five. These aren't these aren't all uh, sequential steps necessarily. And so, I'm going to show you um, how the workflow module actually works here. When you go up here and you click on um, edit this workflow you're going to be presented with this. And this, this is where I said all the roles and all the workflow states really break the UI. Um, but it actually functions perfectly. It's just this admin screen is really slow to load. Um, so this first set of, uh, of screens is the from and to permissions. And so I've set up all these states on this screen. These are different workflow states. And so they correspond with every, uh, every box on this diagram. So I have, a, uh, I have a submitted state, which is just you know, the, the first step. I have the college, then I have, uh, I have a vice president of instruction down here, and then I have the different deans. So every step has a workflow, and every, every time someone needs to view it, it has a workflow state. Now, once you see, that's the first step. So once you figure out your workflow, actually on paper, how it's gonna work, then you have to go in and create a state for each one of those, those phases. The next step is to go to your workflow and then say who can move it from one step to the next step. Um, and what's really nice is that you can set up user roles to do this. So you can give permissions to somebody of a role. Um, so I, if something happens and, and like staff changes at one of the colleges, I don't have to go in and add, change my permissions at all. I just create a new user and add them to the certain role that they need. And so the first step is creation. The author of the node has that permission. So they can actually submit a node, and you have to have that. Um, but that is the only user that's allowed the uh, permission to move it from created to submitted. So all these different roles don't, uh, don't have that permission. The next permission I'm going to show you, submitted is really just basically a static. It, it does, nobody ever sees it in that state. Um, but it, let me go ahead and show you something real quick here, because maybe this isn't. Is this making sense to everybody? Are you following? Yeah, um, <laughs> let me show you the actual website here, and let me show you uh, the form that they're filling out. Maybe that'll help uh, solidify this. Okay, here's our articulation application form, and a teacher would log into the site and basically create the node. They would fill out their high school course here. Uh, they'd select a, a high school with that, where that course is taught. Um, then they would make a selection of which college, and then they would uh, enter in the college number, course title, units, and then attach the documents that need to be attached. Okay, when they submit that, if they select Fresno City College, then it will be moved automatically to the Fresno City College workflow state. 
Okay? And no one can move. Okay, so let me uh, back up here. Let me explain this screen a little better. Maybe is it, is it, Does everybody understand this screen, essentially what it is? The screen is basically the permissions to say this user can move this node from state one to state two. So that's all this is. It's basically saying that um, the user role of Fresno City College Vice President of Instruction has permission to move this node type from Fresno City College workflow state to the Fresno City uh, Division Dean of Applied Technology state. So, Good question. sure. Why is creation, creation is the def creation is required. It's automatically set up for you when you do a workflow. It's like if you don't, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Um, well, let's see. So it's the default. I didn't create creation. That's the default. It's already in there. Okay. okay so you have to have that, uh, and then you have to have one more workflow state. So there's a minimum there. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. because what I'm doing in the creation state um, is in between that and submitted, I have a rule set that based on the CCK um, type of college, whichever college you select, it will, it will do some stuff there. And so that happens before the uh, user even sees the submitted node. So it's, it's a nice, nice little thing. Um, so the, and so this is, this, up here at the top you see, uh, top right you see from and to. And so the, this basically is saying, this is the from, and the current state is Fresno City College, and it's going to whichever one that I go over here. So I'm going from Fresno City College's workflow state to the division D of applied technology state. And the person that's allowed to, to do that transition is this, this person of this role, the vice president of instruction. And they are also allowed to do all these other workflow transitions. Um, so let me go ahead and show you kind of what the trend, what the workflow tab looks like for a uh, user with those permissions. Uh, let me log out and log back in as a vice president of instruction. All right. And I've created a, uh, a page basically to show them all the applications that are in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and view an application that someone submitted. Um, all right, so once a teacher submits an application, the first step, it fires off an email to this user, um, and then they go and they, they basically view the node, download whatever they need to, um, and then they make, a, they make a call. They say, well, this, this person that needs to approve this next is the uh, Dean of Health Service, Health Science. Let me go ahead and make a business. Um, a business, and they, they click Submit. And when they click Submit, it sends an email to that, that user of that role. Um, and then they can go back in here, the same page, and go ahead and move it to the next step. But you notice now that I go back after I moved it from one state to another, that I don't have permission to do anything other than just view what's, what's going on here. So, you go, if you keep going down through here, you'll see that we have different user roles and different workflow states. And I'm sorry it's confusing, but this is, this is why it was hard to do, actually. <laughs> um, the next, we have the FCC Division of Applied Technology, and the only user that's allowed to make a transition from that state to another is, is the uh, user of that role. So we have... Again, over here, I have a user role, FCC Division Dean of Applied Technology. And so they're the only ones allowed to make a transition that is already in that state to the FCC Curriculum Committee. And so with Workflow, you're, most of you are probably, if you're going to use Workflow, it's going to be a lot simpler um, application than, than what I'm trying to do. But um, if you get, you get the idea of how, how the Workflow uh, module works, we also have within the workflow admin here, we have permissions to view um, different things within workflow module. You have the workflow tab permissions. And so 
this workflow tab we see here, you can you can basically say what users are able to actually see that tab at all. Um, because if you don't have permissions to move change the state of a node, then you, you might you could still view basically the log of how, how it's moved along the process. Um, Did you evaluate rules before you started before you made the choice to use workflow? Yes, I'm actually using rules. Um, and I'm I'm going to have to hurry here to get through all of it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm using them in conjunction with each other. Um, yeah, and it, you know, there may be a way to do this with rules. I, could, I couldn't find a, uh, it just, I, in my street research, it, it wasn't the, the best solution for me. Um, rules was not? Yeah, not, not, for, not for workflow. Um, to, manage, to manage the workflow of a node, um, workflow module was... Uh, just seemed like seemed like the best solution. I, I, I never it took me a while to get my head around rules, um, and I'm actually using it, but I'm using it for for a few other things besides uh, just you know the basic workflow of the uh, of the node. Let me go ahead and uh, move on to the, this. Does everybody kind of get that screen? Does that make sense? Basically, it's it's just a permission. It's basically a permission screen, um, and so that's where you set permissions to say who can move it, move a node to a new state who can view that, that node at whatever state it is. And so if, say, a, a node is at the vice president of instruction state, the deans can't see it yet. Neither can an anonymous user. The only person that can see it is the admin and, and whoever has permissions to see it. So it's really granular, which is really nice um, if, if you need to keep things private. Um, so I also use a couple other modules with this actions, uh, rules, and triggers. And I could have made this site a lot simpler if I didn't have about 500 agreements that were already in an existing database. Um, so that, that's really some of the complicated stuff I've had to do is because I have legacy data, um, which is a pain. Um, but the rules modules really come through with a, a lot of the problems I had. Um, using rules, I've been able to, in conjunction with the auto, automatic node title, been able to modify the node title when a field is updated you can use a token module to uh, basically uh, modify your node title after it's been submitted by the author. And so there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. Um, you can populate CCK fields. You can move nodes to new workflow states. Uh, you can send email messages. You can add users to uh, certain roles. And so let me go into uh, some of my rules here. Um, actually, let me show you the node title on an existing agreement. This is our active articulation agreements that we already have in a system. And uh, we have a, they have a naming convention, which is basically the subject area that this agreement, so this is a, a, an AG course, and so it's abbreviated AG. This was the number of the agreements, um, 71. And R stands for Reedley College. And so I wanted to make that automated because previously, the, it was just up to the, the data entry person to enter it, and there was a lot of duplicate numbers and a lot of mistakes. And so I wanted to automate that process so that they didn't have any control over the node titles or the agreement numbers. So using a combination of automatic node title and uh, rules, I was able to do that. Um, let me go to everybody. Is anybody familiar with automatic node titles? All right, let's, let's look at that real quick. Um, so here's my articulation uh, content type. And basically, automatic uh, node title module will um, take tokens. And so I have, a, I have several tokens in here. I have the uh, field agreement number subject, which is basically the subject area of that agreement. Then we have the node ID, which is what I wanted to use for the application identifi identifier um, because it's an atomic uh, number. You know, there's no chance of it being a duplicate. So you're not going to have two IDs that are exactly alike. Uh, and then the field agreement number, um, the college, basically, the abbreviation. And so the problem, the problem though, this would have worked right out of the box if, uh, if I had all these fields populated when they created a node, but I didn't. So when someone creates an application, the only thing that's available, actually none of these things are available. Um, <laughs> because they, they haven't submitted the node yet, so there's no node ID. Uh, so rule module comes in, basically, whenever a new piece of content is uh, submitted that is an articulation agreement, 
it triggers a, a snippet of PHP code. And this is the rule that I use for that. Um, whenever a new articulation agreement is submitted, it executes this piece of PHP code, which basically says um, auto node title, set title, um, and then save the node. And so what it does is, since the node's already been saved once, it has a node ID, and so it basically resaves it, and so, and it also, this, this tells uh, auto node title to run and refresh, and then that updates the node title to the NID. But this happens actually before, this all happens so quick that the user actually never sees it, a blank title, they actually see the NID. Um, so that's one rule. Um, I also have another rule that I'm using here for the uh, CCK field. If they select Fresno City College, then it will um, basically populate populates a field. And uh, I really don't want to go into this, actually, because there's, there's some legacy data problems that I had to work around with rules module. Um, but essentially, by using a rules module, you can say you want something to happen, that, something that triggers this event to happen. And so there's a really advanced stuff you can do with it, and it really can fix some problems that, uh, that you might be having. So, the other, the other thing, I don't want to forget this. Uh, the other thing that the rules module is, is allowing me to do is to move from one work workflow state to another without, without a user having to make a selection that because if you look if you look at this page it's not very user friendly um, let's see here we have a uh, agreement here and I didn't want to present this to teachers I didn't want them to see something like this with the comment box and all this stuff because workflow out of the box with unless you theme it it's gonna um, you know it's just not it's not as clean the output it, the HTML it outputs isn't as clean as the CCK field so I essentially made a CCK field that um, was just a simple radio button selection between the two colleges. And based on which one they select, the rule gets triggered to move that node to the workflow state it needs to go to. So what you can do is you can set up uh, options on your node and say, if a user selects this option, I want this node to be moved to this workflow state. So when you start doing stuff like that, I mean, you really see the power of, of rules and the power of workflow. Um, So we're, I'm also using rules um, to, to send emails, to, to move nodes to new workflow states, and to add users to a certain role. I wanted uh, the only people that will really be using the site are teachers. Um, and so when somebody creates an account, they're automatically assigned the role teacher. And so I'm doing that as well with the with the roles with the rules module. And the night one of the nice things I like about workflow module is its integration with triggers. How many of you uh, use triggers or you know what those are in Drupal? Okay. Um, basically, you have quite a, few, quite a few options. Let me go ahead and go to the workflow uh, page here. Workflow has its own uh, set of triggers. Actions, here we go. And so whenever, when, this is how I'm able to fire off an email when a, work, when a node goes from one workflow state to another. So after uh, the vice president of instruction has approved the node or approved an application to, uh, to go to the next step, on that, act, on that trigger, it, it, it fires off an email. So let me just look at this one. When articulation moves from articulation creation to articulation submitted, I don't have any action there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, when our articulation moves from articulation Fresno City College State to articulation Fresno City Division Dean of Business, it'll send an email to all the users of this role. And then basically I write, I write an a, a email within actions um, and then it basically it just triggers that email to be sent. And so every workflow transition has a possible trigger so you can do something when that happens. So whenever you change a node from one state to another, you, you're, you have the power of, uh, of actions and triggers to, to, to do all kinds of stuff that you, that you might want to do with that.
And the action module is, like I said, I'm using that with triggers. So that's essentially where I put all of my uh, emails or the actions I want to, to be performed. Um, and so I have different actions for different, uh, different things. So I've got a uh, send email to the FCC division dean of fine performing and communication arts role. And so basically that just says, hey, there's, there's a new application, you need to go check it, and it has a couple of token links in there, and th that basically they can, they can go easily get, get to where they need to go. Um, so it, it's really nice because a lot of this functionality seems like it would be extremely difficult to create, but um, really, I mean, somebody, somebody like me that's not a developer with the, these, this selection of modules can, can really do quite a bit of stuff here um, with a little time and effort in, in learning how they work. Um, and that really, that's the only way to uh, only way to get your head around this is just to just to get out there and try it. And I would suggest like maybe a three or four workflow uh, situation first, instead of like me where you're doing like 18 different workflow states. Um, I mean, it's uh, so some days I want to pull my hair out with it. But um, anyway, so that that's the workflow uh, module. And uh, any questions? Mm -hmm. And one question I have is, on the, from the user's perspective, when they submit mm -hmm. that first step, do they have any indication of how much time it, that whole process will take? Um, I don't have, this site is going into alpha testing Monday. Oh. Um, yeah, we're going to basically, we, it, it triggers an email, and in that email it will basically give them a heads up on how long they should expect it to, to take. And I've, I've also, on the user side, um, let me go ahead and log in as a user. I've created a page or a tab in the, their uh, profile that shows all their applications and then it shows them what's, what stage those applications are at. So I'm going to log in with the default teacher account and they can go to my home page and they can view my applications and these are all the applications that user submitted um, and then they can view the application and I'm probably going to actually show them the state on that page eventually. Um, but then they could see that this agreement is currently at the uh, FCC division dean. And there, you know, there's some GUI stuff in here and usability stuff that I really want to really want to make better in the but getting this whole this whole system developed was my first step. Um, and then putting it in front of some key people just to get their feedback on it before we make it live. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, the question is how are you showing the uh, workflow history? It's just a default, basically. Um, anybody that has the workflow tab permissions, which is set up in the workflow module itself, they can view the history. And so they'll be able to see comments and all that stuff. So, so when you're viewing something involved in this process that you're they see the history of the bottom. Yeah. Well, yeah, on the workflow tab, they see it. Um, oh, it's a dedicated tab. It's a dedicated tab, yeah. It's, it's, oh, from the view. Yeah, that's one of the things on my to-do list to figure out if, if it can, I'm sure it can be done. You need um, to look in the workflow module to see if it has a views ink file. Because if it's integrated with views, then you would be able to use views to pull it out. Yeah, it, it is integrated with views. I don't know how, how deeply it's integrated with it because um, basically what you have to do when you use workflow mo module, this is one of the uh, things that I didn't get at first, is that you have to make, uh, you have to basically abandon the uh, workflow default workflow uh, system for Drupal for that node type. So um, everything's just default published by the Drupal workflow. And what you're doing is you're turning over control to the workflow module about who can view what, and you can you can actually use views. So um, this is a view of all the agreements that are active, and it's using workflow permissions here. Um, or filtering by workflow, not filtering by published, not published. So this is all legacy agreements. So we don't actually have any new agreements in here. But question, um, right here, in the front. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, when, with the, when they move things from state to state, this is what I was trying to ask earlier. They didn't do a good job. Is can they ch choose at random? 
or is it defined by the, the process what the next step is? Can I say, you know what, this needs additional review yeah. by so and so? Send it to them first, then back to me. Okay. Question is is can you limit who has uh, what? Can you limit which state the workflow can be moved to by different users? So say I'm I'm a user and I have permissions to move a workflow. Um, yes, you can limit it. So you, that's on the workflow permissions page, the, the really horizontal scrolling page I had. That's where all that's set up. So um, they can only move it to states you allow them to, and it's role-based. So if it's, it's wh whatever role they are, if they have permission to move it from one state to another, they only see the, ones that, they only see the options they have permissions to perform. Does that make sense? Yeah. Question? Uh, any way Mm -hmm. The teacher creates one of these, but gets to put in some documentation that's not attached. Uh, it gets to the uh, College of Instruction, and they, or, they, or even further, and somebody says, "No, nah, you're missing this stuff. I'm going to send it back to you." And then your permissions, I didn't see sort of the return to the from to basically going backwards to you could send it back to the submission stage. Yes. Uh, the question was, is there a way to, to basically once a, a it's moved from one one role, or sorry, one workflow state to the next. Can it be moved back to a, a previous state? Yes, it can. It's all in permission. So, like on that page, um, I still have it up here. It is the nightmare admin page, for real. Well, even if I had three roles it would still be a monster because they have so many workflow states. Um, that's what's causing the horizontal problem. But see... Could be modified to what? Yeah, it might be, but, but you need, you need checkboxes because you need to be able to allow multiple roles. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it could be... I mean... I mean, this page really, this, this will crash some browsers. So, um, this is why I'm using Safari. So, anyway. Oh, a multi-select, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't like multi-selects. Um, they're not user, I mean, if, I'm probably the only person who will ever see this screen, but, so that's why I just, uh, I'm at. This is nice because you can see it real quick who's got Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at a glance, at a glance, at, you know, like a three thousand resolution. Yeah. Why? <laughs> you can't zoom out. No, that would be handy. I think uh, you had a question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. What time we got here? <laughs> um, I don't anticipate a lot. Um, I do anticipate some. We actually proposed this about four months ago. We floated the idea out there, and um, the response was like, well, I'll, I'll just preface it this way. Um, the teachers are pretty much the existing system. They're not using it because... And I don't want to. I don't. I want to be politically correct here. I mean, it's not because there's some people at the college that just don't care. It's the fact that paper is easy to lose, and so the teachers are on their end of it. I think uh, they're actually just going to be happy to see it getting followed up on. So we get calls sometimes where a teacher says, "I submitted an application six months ago. I haven't heard anything," and then we call the college, and nobody knows about it because it got lost. You know, who knows what happened to it, but it got lost. And so it's really an embarrassment for us and for the college. And so on the college end, we're, we're selling this as saying we're going to make you look better. And on the high school end, we're selling it as we're going to make this process better for you. And you're going to get notified when things happen. And if, if you have a problem, you can go log into your site, see where your application is, and then you know the person. You're going to have a contact email. You can email the person, hey, what's up? How, where's my email? Or where's my application? So... I'm sure we're going to have uh, some curmudgeons about it, but, you know, what are you going to do? So, <laughs> any more questions? Yes? How did you populate those legacy agreements? How did I pop? Uh, node import. I tried about five different things. Um, it, it was, 
you know, it's like only 500 nodes, you know, basically. I mean, which is, is at that point where it's almost not even worth it to write a script unless you're good at writing SQL import scripts, which I'm not. So um, I, node import got most of the data in there. Um, and then we have uh, some administrative assistance that got it the rest of the way there, which is cheaper, to be honest with you. I mean, then having somebody like me or a developer or somebody write a script and spend the time to make sure that works, it's sometimes just better just to have people data, in, data entry it. So um, if I'd had like 3,000 nodes, then I would have spent the time to write a script to import it all. But um, yeah, and no, node import's actually really cool. Uh, the problem was uh, with some multi-value fields, if memory serves. Um, that were a little tricky and they wouldn't work. And then there was a couple of different uh, 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 content types, or not content type, um, CCK fields that just, that it's not, not ready for that. So, so I got most of the data in with node import. Do you do the design too? Yeah. Nice. I did not spend a lot of time on the design to be honest, um, but I wanted, you know, I wanted to sell it a little bit on, because a lot of people just care about the, uh, Look of a site, and they didn't really care about the functionality. So, um, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, and, and on the design side of it, um, I wanted to do a little jQuery just because I'm learning it. So, so I've got a little uh, beauty tips plug in here, um, which basically just gives people when they come to the homepage without clicking anywhere, they can kind of find out what they need to know. Because really, essentially, this is ex this is like a site. Um, that from the outside, it's just a table. Um, <laughs> so this is the site, I mean, really. But the, the, the part that I spent more time on is the actual admin of the content behind this. So um, just being able to find what you're looking for, um, click through. A simple menu. Oh, oh, this? The, the black menu across the top? This. This. This is just a block with some, CC, uh, with some CSS. Um, I'm using, this is actually a Zen theme, and Zen has, is awesome with the classes, and so you can really drill down. Um, oh, okay, no, I, I get what you're saying now. Um, this is all views. Um, these are all views, basically, and I'm not doing a session on views. <laughs> this, yeah, this this is a pretty pretty sweet um, view, but uh, basically they're arguments. Um, yeah, yeah, right. That's that's basically what it is. I could show you the view real quick if anybody wants to see that, but we're running out of time. Um, does anybody want to see the view, or any more questions? See the view? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, da -da. Yeah, there is a lot of views on this site. Um, a lot of, I mean, every site really has a lot of views usually, but. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Let's do this. Okay, so this is the main view, really, for the site. Um, it's active agreements. And I, I didn't even go over the flag module, but we, we have uh, two types of, these agreements expire over a certain period of time unless they're renewed by the high school. And so I needed a way to like, easily say, is this an active or inactive agreement? And so flag module really rocks it for that. So. Um, this is these all these this view basically has a relationship with the flag of active agreement, and so this only shows stuff that's that's flagged active. Um, so here's here's the filter we have published. Um, the node type is articulation agreement, and then I have some exposed filters here. Um, let me just go ahead and show you this. So. They, the user, if I've found from watching people use some of our sites um, that a lot of people don't use these uh, select lists or these uh, drop downs here. So that's why I just did this. And uh, this, is just, this is just a menu. 
is all it is. It's not, I know you can do it with views. Um, you can do views menus, but um, I just made a menu here. And, uh, and the, all, all the, uh, like, if you go to ROP, you'll notice that, you know, it's high, it's still, it's still that uh, salmon color. So um, that's all just CSS with the Zen CSS classes. All right. So let's look at active agreements by college. And this is where I get into arguments. Okay. Um, there's an argument for college. And so the title agreements with, and then you have the uh, percent one, that it's just pulling, uh, pulling the college name. And so you'll see agreements with Fresno and ROP, or Fresno ROP. This is the ROP view. I wonder. <laughs> Hold on. Showing you a different view than the. Actually, wanted, okay. Here we go. Active agreements with uh, Fresno City College. So let's just pull in that. Um, with the user. And so I'm, I'm, I have the action to be taken if argument is not present. So by college, what that is given, that's just given me the uh, uh, Fresno City College and Reedley College because I'm, I just selected the summary sorted ascending. And so that just that basically that gives you a list. I'll show you what it looks like without any theming here. Um, So this is just an argument. I mean, you have to have, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not a, I was just uh, at the Acquia table earlier today trying to get my head around arguments because it's still, it's still a bit of a, a foggy area for me, um, but I got it working. So it's really cool. You can do a lot of interesting stuff with arguments. Yes. Okay. Flags. Yeah. Yeah. I have a college relationship um, because uh, this is basically because I wanted to be able to pull in some stuff from uh, the college course node type, um, and you have to have a relationship to do that. Otherwise, otherwise you'll either just get nothing, or you'll get like if it was node title, you just get the node title of the view. Um, and like I said, I, I didn't do a view session because I, I don't feel like I'm a views expert. <laughs> so, um, any other questions on this view? Yeah. Yeah. So, th like, this is what he's referring to. These are all nodes, and uh, I have reasons reasons why I did that because I wanted to have high schools, and I wanted to be able to change the data on that high school. I didn't want it to just be a CCK field. I wanted to have related data, and so um, I I wanted I wanted to set up a system that would live beyond my employment there. So, um, I wanted to be under, people understand it. So. Basically, all these views are very similar uh, to the, the default one. Um, I'm just filtering based on different things and then a different argument. Um, so this, this argument is with the subject. So if it's ag, if it's whatever, it's math. So um, there's a really good arguments video on... Uh, Drupal is it got it's got Drupal.com and this is the gentleman that has that manages got Drupal.com is sitting right there um, and actually that that video that video actually helped me do this so I want to give him a shout out there what was your name again Matt, Matt. so go check out uh, got Drupal.com and got Drupal.com yeah he's got a really good video on uh, using views arguments so. Check that out. Um, it, it'll clear it up a little bit for you. All right. Any other questions before we go? All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening, and uh, have a good evening. Really great presentation. Oh, very. Really, you know, all the university guys really love.